In this and some of the following lessons, we will look at a very useful circuit block known as the operational amplifier or the op amp. It is really a control source, but uh, when it is used like an op amp, it has certain properties which makes it very, very useful and that is why it is used very widely. So, we are going to look at uh, uh, certain op amp circuits and also how to analyze op amp circuits in general. Okay. It is frequently abbreviated as op amp. So, what is it? It is denoted by the symbol. So, it has two inputs that is if we assume that there is some reference node here, then we have V 1 and V 2 at its two inputs. That means, that V 1 is the voltage between this point and ground V 2 is the voltage between that point and ground and V naught is between that and ground and this V naught is A naught times V 1 minus V 2. Okay. So, typically this difference between V 1 and V 2 is denoted V d. So, V naught is dependent only on the difference voltage between its inputs. Okay. So, that is what an op amp is. Now, looking at this definition, it will be obvious to many of you that this is nothing but a voltage control voltage source Okay. Now, the voltage control voltage source is such that the controlling voltage between its terminals is denoted V d and the control source is A naught times V d okay. and one of the terminals of these control sources the bottom terminal as I have shown here is connected to ground which is the common reference voltage and this happens internally to the op amp. This is not a connection that you make. So, these three terminals are available to you. This is denoted plus, that is denoted minus and this is the output. Okay. So, this is the plus terminal as it is marked inside. This is the minus terminal as it is marked inside and that is the output terminal. Okay. So, this is what an op amp is. It is a voltage control voltage source. So, what distinguishes an op amp from a general voltage control voltage source? The point is that this A naught is supposed to be very large. Okay. So, an op amp is a voltage control voltage source with a very high gain. Okay. What is very large depends on the context. It could be that in some context 100 is large enough or in some cases you need a million. Okay. So, the point is that it is very large. In fact, frequently we take the limiting case of A naught being infinity and in one of the following lessons we will deal with uh, the case when A naught is infinity. Okay. So, what can we do with this? What does it mean? So, this is a voltage control voltage source. This means that this voltage is V 1 with respect to ground, this is V 2. So, what does it mean for us to have a voltage control voltage source with a very large gain? This means that if V 1 is larger than V 2, that means that this V 1 minus V 2, this is positive or this V d is positive. So, if V 1 is more than V 2, it means that the output V naught, this voltage is driven strongly positively because A naught is very large for a small positive difference V 1 minus V 2, you will have a very large positive output. Okay. So, for now I will describe it as the output V naught driven strongly positive. Okay. And similarly, if V 1 is smaller than V 2, then this difference V 1 minus V 2 is less than 0, this V d is less than 0 and 
the output V naught is driven strongly negative. Okay. So, this is an important feature of the op amp and this is what we will use to realize a very useful class of uh, op amp circuits based on negative feedback. Okay. So, what does negative feedback mean? First of all, feedback means that you somehow drive the output after looking at the output, comparing it with some desired value and making some computations. That is what is the meaning of feedback, right? Feedback means that you look at what the output is before you do something to change it. The contrast to this is open loop control, where you set the input to something without looking at the output. Okay? So, I will give you an example of uh, driving a car. An open loop control is when let us say you do not have a speedometer at all. Okay? So, if you have some strange vehicle without a speedometer, then to go at a certain speed, you have some vague idea of the speed you want to go to and then for that let us say you press the accelerator down to a certain extent, maybe halfway down. Okay? Now, you have no idea what the speed is, you just get whatever the vehicle gives you. Okay? If you press the accelerator halfway down, it will go at certain speed and that will depend on the properties of the vehicle, maybe of the road, the friction, the accelerator and all of that stuff. Okay? Now, in contrast to this, a closed loop control is when you are actually measuring the speed, that is the normal thing where you have a speedometer which tells you what a speed the vehicle is going at. So, you look at the speedometer and then you make adjustments to the accelerator, you adjust how far you press down, so that it goes at a desired speed, let us say 50 kilometers an hour. So, clearly in one case you are looking at the output, that is the second case, when you are looking at the output you are operating in feedback, whereas in the other case where you did not have any idea of what the speed is, you just press down the accelerator halfway down, you are an open loop system. Okay? Now, it is very clear that if you have feedback, you can set the speed lot more accurately than if you have an open loop system. That is the motivation for realizing negative feedback systems. Okay? Now, in our case, we want to make an amplifier, let us say. So, in my case, I want to make an amplifier using negative feedback. That means that V naught should be equal to k times V i. Okay? I will just recast this relationship as V naught by k should be equal to V i. Okay? Now, how does the op amp help me? What I will do is the following. I sense V naught by k. Okay, how I will do it? I will show it to you in a short while. If V i is more than V naught by k, I strongly drive up V naught. Okay, V naught is the quantity I want to control, it is my output, whereas V i is the input. So, if V i is more than V naught by k, that means that V naught is too little. So, I will strongly drive it up, so that it it goes in the right direction and if V i is smaller than V naught by k, I strongly drive down V naught. So, if V i is smaller than V naught by k, it means that V naught is too high. Okay? So, I have to drive it down. Earlier, I described the op amp as something that strongly drives the output positively if uh, V d is greater than 0 and negatively if V d is less than 0. Now, you see that it essentially accomplishes what we are looking for over here. Okay? So, an op amp which is a voltage control voltage source with a very high gain can be used to realize this amplifier. So, how do I do that? The output of the op amp must be V naught. Okay? and it must be driven up strongly, that is it must be driven strongly positively if V i is more than V naught by k. Okay? So, I have to apply V i to one terminal and V naught by k to the other terminal. Okay? So, with this polarity, the op amp responds to V i minus V naught by k. My difference input voltage V d is V i minus V naught by k. 
okay and similarly if vi happen to be smaller than v0 by k the op amp will strongly pull down v0 okay it will drive it strongly negatively so this is exactly what we want the only thing we need to do in order to complete the circuit is we have to somehow obtain this v0 by k which is a fraction of v0 remember we are realizing an amplifier so this k is more than 1 so v0 by k is smaller than v0 okay now it's very easy to derive a smaller voltage from a larger voltage okay you can do that using a resistive divider okay so if i realize a resistive divider like this where the upper resistor is k minus 1 times the lower resistor the voltage that i get over here is v0 by k so that i take and connect over there where i wanted v0 by k so this completes my circuit okay so i derived the circuit from the idea that if vi is more than v0 by k i should drive up v0 strongly and if vi is smaller than v0 by k i should drive down v0 strongly and i had a block an op amp which is a voltage control voltage source with a very high gain which does this business of strongly driving up or strongly driving down the output so i have realized it like this okay so now we can uh, use our circuit analysis machinery to see exactly what this does right now i derived it based on some intuition and negative feedback but we can use our uh, knowledge of analysis to figure out what it does okay initially if you are a little bit confused with the op amp symbol you can substitute it with the controlled source symbol this is a naught vd and this voltage is vd i have not done anything here i have simply substituted the op amp with the control source the three terminals of the op amp here here and there correspond to this one that one and that one respectively okay now this is a very very simple circuit to analyze the output voltage here v0 is a0 vd and vd is the unknown but vd we know is vi minus v0 by k okay so this difference here is vi minus v0 by k okay so the output voltage v0 is a0 times vd which is a0 times vi minus v0 by k okay so by taking terms containing v0 to the other side i get this ratio v0 by vi to be a0 by 1 plus a0 by k which can also be written as k by 1 plus k by a0 now what did i want my original goal was to realize an amplifier of gain k so that means that the desired function is v0 by vi equals k now what i have is not exactly this but that one but by inspection you see that this will be approximately equal to k if k by a0 is much smaller than 1 okay so this is where the significance of a0 being very very large comes in the op amp has a very large gain a0 so this k by a0 is much smaller than 1 if k is some modest value let's say a0 is 1 million and your k is 100 so k by a0 is 1 by 10000 which is a very very small value compared to 1 okay so in that case the gain of this amplifier v0 by vi which is k divided by 1 plus k by a0 can be approximated by k okay so this is true if op amp gain a0 is very 
large okay so this is the reason we need a very large gain in the op amp and then the gain of this amplifier is k which depends only on ratio of resistors okay it depends on this resistor and that resistor okay so this is an amplifier using negative feedback uh, using an op amp okay and it gives us a feedback controlled amplifier of a gain which is very very close to k okay so some quick comments on this circuit I have set the resistance value the upper one to be k minus 1 r the lower one to be r okay and the actual gain of this is k by 1 plus k by a naught where a naught is the gain of the op amp it means that if this difference voltage is vd the output v naught will be a naught times v d okay and if a naught is very very large this gain is approximated by k okay this is if a naught by k is much more than 1 okay so in that case the denominator becomes approximately 1 and the gain is just k now, this particular circuit it is a classic op amp circuit known as a non inverting amplifier and very frequently you see it in textbooks with a slightly different notation for resistors this is called R 2 and R 1. Okay, the circuit is exactly the same. So, R2 by R1 is nothing but the ratio of this resistor to that resistor, which is k minus 1. Okay, so the gain of this non inverting amplifier when I denote the two resistors as R2 and R1 is V0 by Vi. The same formula holds, the only thing is I would express k in terms of R 2 and R 1. Okay. So, clearly from this we see that k is 1 plus R 2 by R 1. So, the gain is 1 plus R 2 by R 1 times 1 by 1 plus R 2 by R 1 divided by A naught, which is approximately equal to 1 plus R 2 by R 1 if the op amps gain a naught is very large. Some of you who are familiar with op amp circuits would already be familiar with this formula. What I showed you is how this negative feedback circuit is derived. Okay, It operates based on sensing the output, sensing a fraction of the output, comparing it to the input and driving the output strongly up or down based on the difference. Okay.